collegiately at UCF, University of Central Florida. She lives in Grand Prairie, Texas. That's in the hood here, not far at all, neighborhood. And this is the first time she has bowled the Queens on television. And a little bit of a flat 10 to start things off here. She has won a couple of BBA Women's Series titles as well and has been a member of Team USA for eight straight years. Key, what about some keys for, De uh, excuse me, for Stephanie? Well, Stephanie averaged 227 all the way through match play, out averaging everyone by over 12 pins a game. She needs to play to her strengths. She's very good at creating a lot of heavy roll and angle down lane while pushing it through the front. She's a very good straight player. I think she can take advantage of that with the, th the other three players on the show uh, also playing to the right and then Deandra being to her left. Now, Stephanie has some experience in match play with the two the player directly above her, Carolyn Doran Ballard and Deandra as Beatty explained that in a moment. She defeated Deandra 697 to 550, probably the worst set that Deandra had in the entire tournament, but lost to Carolyn 596 to 592 in the match to determine who was number one and who was number two. And that sent the loss to Deandra or by Deandra sent her into the roll off three games among four players to fill out the rest of our step ladder. And big break there. Instead of a sleeper, she's just going to have to deal with the eight solo. As you watch this one, it crosses the arrows just a little bit right of where she wanted it to. The head pin goes to the wall, comes back around, hits the four, which calls into the two. Nothing hits the eight to crumble the bucket, though. But some nines are better than others. It's much nicer to shoot an eight pin than a 210. Every one of our bowlers on this program is successful in college. Liz Johnson bowled in college one year at Moorhead State, was the MVP. Joe Sierra is two-time national Cha player of the year and national champion. DeAndre S. Beatty, we're watching now, two-time national champion. Stephanie Nason is outstanding at UCF. And Carolyn Doran Ballard, three-time All-American and two national titles. However, she wasn't player of the year. So. Well, yeah, obviously the underdog. <laughs> There you go. That's, that's what you expected from her. Well, and that's her ace shot right there. It comes off her hand at a different rev rate. It was 30 points higher, according to our cat set in the shot before it. That's the really good one. Same equipment then from the last game? Yeah, she's shooting a, she's using a Storm Marvel, the a higher pin to low RG ball, clean cover. Uh, gives her some mid lane and a lot of back end reaction. Plays right into her strengths as well. Right. Stephanie likes to hang loose a little bit, but it's awfully tough to do when you get on television. Those first couple of shots, you get moving a little bit fast. When she gets going a little bit forward, comes off her hand early like it did the first shot, online, but not quite where she wants rev rate wise. That one, she got forward a little bit earlier and it got lost it to the right. I expect her to settle down, though. This is a free shot for her to settle down, get her feet back underneath her, and then the third frame will be a good shot. No problem in covering that. Well, Seventy Nation understands as well as anyone as she seeks her first major championship, how difficult this format is to capture the major. Queens has been my toughest event um, that we've ever had. The format is really challenging. You know, you can bowl well all week, and. You get two bad crosses and you're out, you're out. So I think the format is what makes Queens probably the toughest event that we have. Roll it did, 10 straight back. And the first strike for Stephanie Nation. And that will solo her nerves. Now she gets into a little rhythm. It's all based on upper body position for her. She's, she gets going and she gets too far forward, loses her leverage, and then shots go offline. She stays back and stays centered like that. Really good. Check. 
and Messenger is not going to make it in time. We saw this just a little bit earlier, right at the end of, of this her last match, where the six pin was having a hard time getting out of the gutter and hitting the 10. Her ball's not getting enough traction. It's not going through the pins quite enough. One of Dander's strength is she's pretty good with, with speed control. She can get slower and open up the lane more. The question is whether the lanes have opened up enough to catch the ball as she throws it to the right yet. No trouble with that single pin conversion. Well, Wednesday night, ESPN's regular season coverage of the NBA concludes with a doubleheader. It all begins with the Kia NBA countdown at 7.30 Eastern. And at 8 Eastern, Blake Griffin, Chris Paul, and the Clippers visit Carmelo Anthony and the New York Knicks. And finally, at 10.30 Eastern, Tony Parker and the Spurs take on Steve Nash and the Suns. The NBA on ESPN, ESPN3, and also live on WatchESPN.com and the Watch ESPN app. It's Wednesday night. Got a chance to bowl with Chris Paul once in his event. One of the nicest, most grounded guys for a superstar you'll ever see. Look, it did. Her bowling ball is doing a pretty good job of listening. <laughs> it's nice when they mine like that. How about that, does that happen all the time? But this is a product of being great in great position at the foul line. She does get it further right than she has at any other point, and it makes a bigger move through and cut through them that time. That was. That will relax your nerves as well. Oh, that won't. Four, six, seven. Uh, she's missed wide right earlier. This time she goes right through the nose. Yeah, she got this one. She actually kind of double crossed herself with her feet. She got going and and uh, came over the top of with her left foot and then had no choice but to shut her shoulders down to get it back online. A rare mistake for her. She has great footwork and great position at the foul line most of the time. We just hammer those two pins for the count and hope for the best. Well, Stephanie is quite the athlete. She earlier this year in January she ran the Disney Marathon in Orlando that's an area that she's very familiar with she went to college here and is from there now she's training and she's right there is a lot of time left she's training to do the half marathon and the marathon in the same weekend <laughs> yeah I've often thought about that same thing uh, I'll be happy to drive 26 yeah. miles with anyone and I'll run the point too maybe Talking about the we, right? <laughs> Beautiful. There we go. Come on. Close match. We kind of expected this. Both these ladies trying to get that first major championship. They've got glittering resumes. They've been successful and Team USA level, successful at regional level. And they're winners, but everybody wants that tiara. So far, we're looking for our first strike on the right lane now in frame five of the semifinal match. Okay, there you go. Here's Corbett Austin as Vice President of Operations of Storm, sponsor of our event. Also, I do want to give a shout out to the AMF Euless Lanes, our friends uh, just down the road here who provided the qualifying house. And a particular shout out to every bowling house around the country who has our telecast on. We thank you for keeping an eye on our sport. Shot is right. It's pretty interesting. Some of the commentary that we're getting from the players themselves. DeAndre Brady knew that shot was good, and it gives her three strikes in a row and a leg up on Stephanie Nation for the right to play Carolyn Doran Ballard and the right to play for twenty thousand dollars the tiara and the USBC Queens title. There's your situation halfway through match three at the USBC Queens. Deandra S. Beatty, the number three seed, in control of her match with Stephanie Nation, who paid the price for a bad shot in the fourth frame. Let's go over to Kathy's corner. Kathy Doran Lizzie with our fourth place finisher, Liz Johnson.
Liz, you started out on fire. I thought for sure we were going to be presenting you with Queen's title number <laughs> two tonight. What happened? Um, for as good as I, I bowled the first game, the second game, I just I wasn't making shots. You know, I made maybe five good shots, and uh, my bad shots I paid for. Did you find the lanes were close enough this week mm -hmm. here as they were at the other place? Yeah, I was, I was playing them pretty close. Uh, I was using a little d different ball, ball that rolled up a little sooner. Other than that, I played everything pretty much the same. Physically, you feel good? Yeah, physically, I feel really good. I mean, yeah. I felt good about everything. You look great as always. Congratulations. Thank you. Great Thanks week. a lot, Kathy. Dave? Thank you both very much, Liz Johnson. Outstanding bowling. No question. She'll be back. Stephanie Nation out trying to overcome a 34 pin deficit. As Chris mentioned earlier in match play, she averaged 227 and a half. Come on. Got it. <laughs> A little extra punch in that one. Good job. Well, ball we've seen a lot today already. Uh, another Columbia 300 Omen. Uh, very strong cover. Another high pin to flare. And this one just explodes at the pins. Finally getting on track just a little bit. Cutting the deficit to 24. You can see that pin right over the ring finger. That's probably about four and a half inches, maybe four inches from her axis point. That allowed the ball to flare as well. Creating some length. A lot of flare will continue for a long time through the pins. Roll, roll, roll. Back the bucket out, but still, the 2-4-5 remains for Stephanie. According to our cast set, it's just a little bit more than a half board right of the last shot, which was almost perfect. I'll tell you that the lanes seem to be opening up more for Deandra as a power player than they are for the girls that are playing more direct. How do you think that might affect the next match should Deandra advance? Well, it, they're not going to get harder from Deandra at this point. Okay. She's going to have to move a little bit, but as long as she can give up the moves, it's pretty simple for her. Carolyn will have to navigate through a lot more traffic with the other three players in front of her, and it doesn't seem to be getting a lot easier for them right now. Take a look at what Deandra has done vis a vis left versus right in her match and a half or match so far. Now, my experience through Team USA camps and different things here, most of the time the left lane when you're playing out is the harder lane. But we've seen more players, which Liz did struggle in the left lane, but for Deandra, it's almost flipped to where the right lane has been her, her tougher lane. A kick, save, and a beauty on that 10 pin. All right, here is our special storm watch and win code. Go to bowl.com slash queens and enter the code for the chance to win free storm merchandise. There it is right there on your screen. And that's a beautiful tiara, beautiful trophy, and also a nice check that goes along with being a major champion. $20,000. Man, just smothered that four pin. Swatted that thing aside. It's pretty interesting to note the two different strategies while the straight players are having a hard time getting the ball to hook on that left lane on lane seven, which we've seen a lot through our camps. Deandra, on the other hand, her ball is hooking more on the left lane. They talked in the break with her with her reps, Del Ballard and Chris Schlemmer, about moving a little bit left. She moved one. She's going to have to move another one here pretty soon, or she's going to go high in that lane. Five straight strikes for her. And Stephanie Nation gets the 10 to go down. Last year's U.S. Women's Open had it all. The largest crowd ever to attend a bowling competition, the largest venue ever in U.S. bowling history at Cowboy Stadium, an incredible competition culminating in a win by Leanne Hulsenberg. She hadn't won in over 10 years. But even she was overshadowed by the antics of her two-year-old son, Barrett. He became a national sensation and made for a great event. So how can you top that this year? How about an outdoor competition under the Reno Arch? The competition gets underway. Yeah, the Reno Arch. June 21st, televised finals on ESPN2. July 3rd at 8 o'clock. That is going to be outrageous. That is a great church. And 
and that might do it. Yeah, that will end Stephanie's day. Unfortunately, this is just a little bit of move right off the off the light shot last time. She liked it off her hand, and according to Cat's data, it was a really good shot as well for the Greek Church. I think for Carolyn to have any chance, she's going to have to move into the track in that area between 10 and 15, where she's crossing the crossing the arrows around the 12th board. She's going to have to take all her touch because it's going to be mano a mano, I guess, to, mm -hmm. to Dander's power from the same spot. And now we're going to see a ball change by DeAndre. She's going to get a little bit different look at something else. This is going to be a critical theory. That's yeah. Roto grip. At this point, her score doesn't matter. She's already moving on. She's looking for something to solve. The combination on that right lane, and, and that ball is trying to hook back through the pin, so that's what she's looking for. So she gets a sixth straight strike as a bonus, and she will take on Carolyn Doran Ballard in our next match. To trip the four right into the nine. Everything going her way right now. Yeah, she, she might need to save just a little bit of that. Got a pretty cagey veteran coming oh, yeah. next. got it going on right now. Well, the Amber we mentioned in the top first match, and she got on the show in 2007, was the number one seed, lost to Kelly Kulik, but in doing so rolled a 147. So we had a chance to ask her, what did she learn from that very difficult experience? It would mean everything. All of the hours of, of practice that I've put in, all the coaches that have helped me along the way, um, it's, it's not, I'm not here because of putting myself in this position. I'm here because of all of the help that I had along the way. So, you know, winning, winning this title uh, means lots of people win this title because it's because of them that I'm able to be in this position. At this point, she could throw a marble down there and knock down 10. <laughs> she could end up with a 270 here. It's a little more aggressive cover and it's allowed her to move a little deeper on the lane. This is. This is not great news for CDB that she's getting a few free shots to to line up. So I guess the big discussion in between. My goodness, this is just ridiculous. The big discussion now for her and her ball reps is going to be, what are we going to roll in that championship match? I think she's going to roll the ball she just threw the last couple frames just because it looks so much better on the right lane. If it doesn't strike a couple of times on the left lane, she might go back to that same the same uh, Marvel Pro, but she's definitely going to throw it on the right lane, in my opinion. Stephanie Nation's Queens will conclude with a third place finish. Her best ever. This is the first time she's made the Queens television show. She's been on the U.S. Women's Open show three times. May well make it again this year when we go into Reno. So a great run for Stephanie has come to an end. And she, I'm sure her big sister, Ruby, is watching today. Stephanie very involved in Big Brother's Big Sister. Still very proud of her big sister, Stephanie. Does a lot of work. Helps out a lot with our charity as well. JDRF. She's a... She'll be back full force next next Labor Day in uh, 2013 when the Queens happens again. Just like every time. In Vegas. Yeah, I think this, you know, great learning experience for her dealing with the television at this environment and well, every Mom, reason. Dad, I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> well, a nice finish. That'll be a little bit of a better taste in Stephanie Nation's mind there than in the middles where she struggled, but again, she got beat by a 270. Not a lot you can say about that. Deandra Esbady has been dominant in two straight matches. She's going to advance the championship against the veteran, the experienced and 